Hello everyone. It hasn't been a particularly productive weekend. I had planned to do uh, some more software work, particularly on uh, solar automata and and various other things, particularly on modelling some of the these ring oscillator circuits that I've been playing with. Turns out that I, I did something unusual for me. I normally do the math, you know, maths or maths, as I've been told to say, rather than math um, for the uh, non-American people out there. Normally, I, you know, I like to do the maths on, on the project first before I invest too much effort into building it. But this particular circuit is so simple. Um, I just went nuts with the the parts bin, and and built up 38 stages, uh, and uh, let it rip. It's uh, it's interesting when you scale it up. It it, uh, it it behaves quite differently to some of the simulations. I, I think it might have something to do with the gain and the the time constants that I'm using per cell, but. Basically, you can you can watch the impulse go round the loop, round and round and round. Basically, each alternating cell has the opposite state, and the um, the the displacement or the the uh, the change of state propagates through the network uh, as a uh, a function, I guess, of the time constant of each stage. But it's. Uh, it's quite interesting that because there's a, an even number here, I've, I've taken the very last cell out and I put a red LED in there, and it um, sort of shows you the the two alternating states that the each cell can be in. Now, if I if I break the loop here for a minute, you can see that the impulse stops when it reaches the end of the um, the loop, and and everything becomes stable. Now, if I inject a pulse into this loop. Got to be a little bit careful because I um, I have to turn the current limiting off on my power supply now to supply enough current to all of the LEDs. So if I uh, screw up, I'll I'll end up smoking something. Excuse me for a minute. I should have prepared this earlier. Just a 1k resistor, so I don't destroy things while I try and force the state of individual cells. Okay, so if I inject a pulse into the network, you can watch it go right through to the other end. Note that I have to keep the drive constant. If I remove the drive and just inject a short pulse, it won't propagate the entire way through the network. I think this is related to difference in time constant between the attack and the decay part of the, the waveform. If you think about it, the capacitors are being charged through the, the 110 um, kiloohm resistors on the um, the attack part of the waveform, but they're discharging through the base with the base current required to uh, to supply the current to the LED, which is you know limited by the beta of the transistor and the uh, the resistor in the collector. So I think the uh, the decay is a lot faster than the attack. So basically, the the decay waveform catches up. With the attack waveform and um, and cancels it before it can propagate right to the end. It's interesting, however. All right, let's note that I can I can do that in any particular cell. I can um, yeah, if I get it in the right hole, I can. Got to um, inject it in a cell that's currently in a different state. So obviously I'm only forcing it up here, not not up and down. Although I can swap the um, the power over to the other side and uh, over the other rail and pull it down. And it will work pretty much the same. Okay, let's re-establish the, uh, the loop and let it oscillate again. Again, got to be careful I don't blow stuff up. Drat. Right, there we go. Watching this, this happen, and uh, I mentioned it in my previous video, I thought it would be interesting to try different topologies where you link together um, smaller rings of cells or perhaps bifurcated trees uh, of you know, graph, general graphs of connectivity between cells. Something I haven't done a whole lot of experimentation with, but a, an interesting, um, interesting little 
indicator that it might actually work anyway is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to cross connect a group of five cells towards the middle of the, the, the loop and uh, let them recirculate the signal. Now, if you watch the uh, the good old red LED here, you can see that it's blinking several times per cycle around. Essentially, what's happening is this little recirculated section is acting as a uh, as like an oscillator, but it, it's being controlled on and off by the pulse that continues around the longer part of the loop. Basically, when two cells have the same state right alongside of each other, they won't propagate a pulse traveling through the network towards them. So pulse comes along, goes around, recirculates through the loop and continues to do that until the pulse that had basically started this all goes all the way around the loop and comes back and then it interferes with it, it interferes with the recirculation and stops it. So it's uh, it's quite an interesting effect. You can you can tap it at different points and have a general play with the topology and get a lot of different kind of blinking patterns out of it. It might be interesting to build um, a larger version of this with a, a whole bunch of uh, patching points where you can play with the topology and, and create different effects with it. Might be a fun thing to, to set up um, with a whole bunch of resistive protection on the, the actual patching points so that you know people won't blow it up and uh, let people go nuts with it maybe at a, a conference or something. But it's, uh, it, yeah, it's quite an, an interesting little blinky I thought that you can, uh, you can have fun with. You probably don't have to build it as, as large as this to to have fun with it. I mean, the original sill sits here, and you know, it's only what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stages. I did make a few changes. I played with putting some diodes in in here to control um, the coupling between the cells. Uh, still work in progress, but I think the the very simple circuit with you know the transistor, two resistors, a capacitor, and a diode uh, LED is. Uh, it, for its simplicity, it, it really gives you uh, quite a lot to play with. All right, let's try tapping it somewhere else. It's interesting to to, uh, to just try and work out in your head or, or on a piece of paper how the circuit's actually going to behave when you go and do this, because it's not always completely um, completely obvious what, what it will do. Like here you can see that the pulse comes along, goes around, and then hops back and, and recirculates through this part of the network. And then uh, you can see here by the red blinking LED how this part of the, the circuit's actually behaving. Obviously if you want to, to to play with it more, I've been probing it with the Chrome and watching the, the waveforms um, going around. It's not quite purely digital. There, there is differences in the amplitude of the, the signals that make it around the loop when you do various different tappings. It's, uh, it's actually quite complicated for something that seems so simple. It, uh, it has a lot of mysteries if you're prepared to sit down and study it. If nothing else, it looks really cool. I like that about it. Anyway. Have fun.